Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>[Unclear]
in the afternoon, fog. When the fog and the moon is on the horizon in the early morning, we see a very long funnel of light, of fog, um, over the lights and over every light fixtures and every, anything that has light, even the car lights. Have you ever seen the car driving down the street and you see that their lights aren't pointing straight, that the beam of light is pointing upwards instead of forward? Ah, parallax? <laughs> an example of foreshortening? Well, it's an example of the bending of light, that's for sure. So people are asking me, can you get in close, Bruce, really close? Oh yeah, we're gonna go blurry close. We're gonna go troll blur close, okay? <laughs> we have to because it's awesome. I love looking at the surface close up, as close as I can myself. We'll just ease into it here, but yeah. Let's look at very close up craters and this is near the full moon the day before, two days before. So, uh, two Aristarchus craters. Here's one and here's two. What? What? Do you see that? Copernicus crater, which you'll see very close, as big as an apple in a second or two, is also um, a crater that has a crater nearby that is almost identical to it. Several of the craters um, look like they're repeating themselves. And I am up to the sixth massive rectangle square that I've shown you on the surface. I mean, Aristarchus Crater is not a perfect rectangle, but it's pretty damn close when you look at it. And the other crater here, look closely on the right. So now what I'm doing is there's not a lot of color during the full moon and I'm taking advantage of that. I've even taken the saturation down right here to be able to see it even better. Look at the little connected dome-like objects inside of Aristarchus Crater just below the big pill shape there, and you can see the massive connection in the center going also into the ground and a big shadow. Why is there a shadow there? Because that line that you're seeing is actually elevated off the surface. So let's get in just a little closer than that because it's clear. The 46 megapixel camera, I love it. We can zoom in a lot and we don't have to um, stay so far away because this is pretty close. So look at the size of your screen and say to yourself, Aristarchus Crater is practically half the size of the screen. I love seeing this here along the edge, the outer limits. Yeah, there's an edge on the moon, definitely an edge, I can see it. Um, I'll call it an edge. Um, watch while we're going up, guys and gals, Clavius Crater and Tycho Crater, we're gonna see it pretty close. Tycho Crater right here on the right there and Clavius Crater right there. Hard to see, eh? Well, the wider the moon gets, the closer it gets to being full, the less we can see that elevation towards the center of the moon. So now we're seeing some elevation off the outer limits on the left there, you see in the top corner. That's why I kept it in the frame because um, it's showing us an elevated surface, bending of light, foreshortening, parallax, one degree, they say. Um, that's the reason why they say that we're seeing the moon that way. Either way, I'm just following the information that's out there online. Look at these green patches. Hmm. Yeah, there's three kinds of greens, right? Well, I'm talking about the lime colored greens, the ones that look like tree colors. Tree colors, I said. That's all I said. <laughs> and that was the scary part of the video. So now we continue to view the surface of the moon and look for colors. So somebody told me sometimes when I say there's colors, you guys don't see it. I'm sorry, and that can be, and thanks for telling me. And, you know, different screens, that's what's happening, right? We all have different screens. Sometimes we have very big sizes. Let's do a little test here. I see a lot of greenery, lime green here, all over these craters here. I don't know if you guys can see any signs of it. And now as we're going upwards, I'm seeing a more of a mint turquoise green. So there is a lot of coloring on the surface of all these craters. They're mixed with maybe five, six different colors. And the surface really is um, Earth-like. Look at the dark structure. It's per pyramidal, right? A pyramid? It's triangular. A point. There's several of them all through the mountains along the Terminator line. And each time the Terminator line moves across the surface of the moon, it exposes many areas with the triangular shapes. 
it really seems, it looks like it anyways, that the surface was built so that we would not recognize these structures. Or it's just because it's far away, it's so natural. I can see other dark structures. And always that 90 degree angle, that, that one I just showed you was, I mean, that sticks out to me. It definitely sticks out. And I've shown a lot of squares, triangles too, and not just um, objects, but outlines of triangles and squares and get this so a circle beside Plato crater I've showed it it's there it's massive it looks like a shadow and it's right beside Plato crater and how did I see that well I had to wait for the terminator line to come by and I was able to see that on the surface um, look there's another one here where we're zooming up there see the triangle or the corner if you want that shadow it looks like a literal square sticking out of the ground and the reason why it's crooked could be the parallax so give or take the shortening you know i was very sad to hear that many of you in other countries are not able to see the live streams at night so i'll see you all tomorrow morning at 11. <laughs>